What's wrong with having it good for a change? Now they're gonna let us have it good if we just help them. They're gonna leave us alone, let us make some money. You can have a little taste of that good life too now. I know you want it, hell, everybody does. You do it your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. Oh yeah. Here come a funky ditty from the one that make you move. Doing the work and soldier field till ain't nothing left to do. Kicking the knowledge for the people just like me and you. And I'ma keep on running it until the shit is through. This one is for the sissy niggas living in the house. You know the kind of ones that jump on mass and call them out. They kind of tricky, can't be trusted cause they run their mouth. And when some shit start up, it's always them that ain't around. This is a warning for the few I knew like it. Firm. You might get cheated when you meet them, but I hope you learn That every motherfucker don't know how to wait his turn And every brother ain't a brother and you might get burned A little knowledge from a scholar so you know the point My name is Paris and I kicks it to you from the heart Thought I forgot you, but I caught you punk, I thought you knew House niggas bleed too, shit ain't through What up, all man? Can you pin down exactly what would keep investors happy, make them feel more confident? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, personally, uh, it doesn't matter. That, that's, see, I'm a trader. Uh, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I go with what the, uh, I, if I see an opportunity to make money, I go with that. Um, so for most traders, it's not about, it's that we don't really care that much how they're going to fix the economy, how they're going to fix the, uh, the whole situation. Our job is to make money from it. And personally, I've been dreaming of this moment for three years. Uh, I, I, I have a confession, which is uh, I go to bed every night, I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. Why? Because uh, people don't seem to uh, maybe remember, but uh, the 30s depression, the depression in the 30s, wasn't just about a market crash. There were some people who were prepared to make money from that crash. And I think anybody can do that. It, it isn't just for some people in the elite anybody can actually make money, it's an opportunity. Uh, when the market crashes, uh, when the euro and the big stock markets crash, if you know what to do, um, if, if you have the right plan to set up, uh, you, can, you can make a lot of money from this. Uh, for example, hedging strategies is one. Um, then investing in bonds, treasury bonds, that sort of stuff. If you could see the people around me, jaws have collectively dropped at what you've just said. I mean, it, we, we appreciate your candor. However, it doesn't help the rest of us, does it, or the rest of the Eurozone? I, I would say this. Listen, I would say this to everybody who's watching this. This economic crisis is like a cancer. If you just wait and wait thinking this is going to go away, just like a cancer, it's going to grow and it's going to be too late. What I would say to everybody is get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to... Um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world.
Max, if I could start with you, I mean, what is it about Goldman Sachs? How does it manage to, to turn the figures around like that? Well, Goldman Sachs are scum. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, they basically have co-opted the uh, U.S. government. They've co-opted the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve functionality. Uh, they've co-opted the Obama administration. Barack Obama, uh, you know, dances to Goldman Sachs' tune. And they are really crooked and abominable in what they've done. Uh, you just remember Hank Paulson held Congress hostage, took mm. him in the back room and said, give us $700 billion. We're going to crash this market. He's an arsonist. He's, he's an outlaw. And yet, He's given You've praise. Got Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, who was CEO at, uh, at uh, Goldman Sachs. Sure, but if you go down the list, they're all Goldman Sachs scum. Whether it's Hank Paulson, whether it's uh, Geithner has very close ties to Goldman Sachs, and of course, all these banking uh, bonuses are paid out to all their cronies who are Goldman Sachs scum. And America, for some reason, has allowed this coup d'etat to take place—a silent coup d'etat where the Goldman Sachs and their friends now control the U.S. government, and I, they are I manipulating. What were the crimes that Goldman committed? Well, uh, there, there were really two classes of potential crimes that we're looking at with uh, the information in the, in the Senate report uh, that came up from uh, Senator Levin and Coburn of, of Oklahoma, and it's lying to investors and lying to Congress. Uh, and I went through all of this in the piece. Uh, the lying to investors part really involves uh, the whole issue of, you know, Goldman uh, coming to a realization that they were sitting on a time bomb of toxic assets. They make a decision to unload those on customers but not tell them that they had a negative view of them and that they were betting against those assets th at the same time. This is all complicated and p perhaps difficult to prove, but then there's the whole issue of lying to Congress, which we, we laid out we think is a pretty simple case. Right. There were a number of instances where it's just really hard to see how they could argue that they didn't lie to Congress, uh, and I can go through those if you like. Well, I, I think a lot of people on the lying to customers have an instinctive problem with them. If, if a real estate agent is selling a house, for example, you know, maybe the real estate agent wouldn't buy the house with a 10-foot pole, sure. but you know, their job is to sell it, so forth. So, so let's leave that aside for a second. Focus on specific instances in which you think Goldman executives lied to Congress. Well, I'll give you a great example. The CFO, uh, David Vinier, uh, he was the guy who coined the term the big short. Uh, we see in the emails in this report, uh, Vinier at one point says, you know, this is what happens when you don't have the big short. He was talking about another company that didn't have a negative position with mortgages that summer. Uh, he comes to Congress, and one of the first things that he testifies to is it is not a large short. Uh, and this is one of many examples of basically one-to-one -one using antonyms. You know, they, they basically said one thing, and then they said exactly the opposite in, in their testimony. Uh, Lloyd Blankfein said two things that were very interesting. He said, um, we did not have a massive short bet, uh, and we did not bet against our clients. Again, Blankfein was involved in these email transactions where they were using the term the big short that summer. Uh, also, pretty clearly, Goldman did bet against their clients. That in one deal, they had a $2 billion short position uh, against the Hudson deal that they themselves sold. So that's, those are some examples uh, of, of places where it's, it seems pretty obvious that there was some kind of misleading going on. We have a bit of controversy on our hands tonight, don't we? Le Mans' London correspondent claims that Goldman Sachs has developed a network of influential figures across Europe, which includes the new head of the European Central Bank. 
It's a sense of conflict of interest. It's pretty extraordinary stuff. Uh, page two of Le Monde today, uh, the, free ma the European Freemasonry of Goldman Sachs. And what they mean by Freemasonry is the way in which the Freemasons operate is it's a network. Mm -hmm. And Goldman Sachs essentially, according to the London correspondent, I mean, it's pretty difficult to refute what he says, have put in place a network across Europe. Who does that include? You've got Mario Draghi. Let's have a look at his photo here online. Uh, he is uh, the former, he's the new head head of the European Central Bank, former Vice President of Goldman Sachs Europe. You've also got uh, the current Prime Minister, uh, unelected Prime Minister of Italy, that's Mario Monti. He was a former uh, advisor to Goldman Sachs uh, from, uh, I think, 2005 up until the point when he was made Prime Minister. You've also got the Prime Minister of Greece uh, by the name of Lukas Papa Papademos. Papademos. And he uh, was a former head of the, European, of the Greek Central Bank uh, at the time when Greece came into the Eurozone. Now, what they're saying here is uh, the, the figures that Greece, Greece presented, we've been hearing this for a long time now, that the figures were, were, were not honest. And in fact, it seems that Goldman Sachs helped Greece to uh, present a better face to the world uh, through f very complicated financial instruments known as swaps. This was a financial instrument that uh, Goldman Sachs uh, helped Greece to conceal its debt that's been, with. That's since been referred to as lies and manipulation by various observers since, hasn't it? But it's, what's extraordinary is that uh, the, the Greek Central Bank was, I suppose, complicit with Goldman Sachs in concealing the true extent of Greek debt. And you had Lucas Papademos at the head of the Greek Central Bank at that time. And uh, so he, they, 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 he goes through various other figures. You've also got this guy, a former European commissioner, an Irish man by the name of Peter Sutherland. He helped to place Mario Monti, who is now the Prime Minister, at the head of the Trilateral Commission, according uh, to Le Monde. That's a key inner circle for the global elite. So what you're seeing here uh, in this article is a list of names of people who have very close associations with Goldman Sachs, who have very senior positions, either in central banks or at government level in several different European so countries. So Goldman Sachs, Freemasons, all linked together, and Le Monde basically going public on it and saying the, this Le Monde is going public the on the whole thing. sorts of conspiracy theories swirling around um, as to why the events in Greece and Italy happened as they did, we can never be certain. What we do know is that two democratically elected premiers were removed by the bully boys from Brussels. They weren't acceptable anymore. Um, of course, in the case of, of Greece, uh, Mr. Papandreou dared to swear in public. Yes, he used the word R, ah, the referendum word. Unacceptable. He had to go. Uh, Mr. Berlusconi that was beyond the pale, um, and things in Greece may look to be bad, but in Italy, we've got Mr. Monti, um, a, four Euro a former European commissioner, one of the architects of the Eurozone, disaster, um, unelected, not even a member of the parliament at the time this idea came through, and then to compound it all, he's chosen a cabinet of people, not one of whom is a democratically elected politician. Whatever the source of all of this is, I think we have to say, if we believe in freedom and democracy, it is a monstrosity. Is this all a coincidence? No. It's all about control. But, you know, really, you have the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low-grade bank clerk. And the question that I want to ask, the question that I want to ask, that we're all going to ask, is who are you? I'd never heard of you. Nobody in Europe had ever heard of you. I would like to ask you, President, who voted for you and what mechanism? Oh, I know democracy is not popular with you lot. And uh, what mechanism Mr. do President, the peoples of Europe have Mr. to remove President. you? Is this European democracy? Well, I, I sense, uh, I sense well, though, that you're competent and capable and dangerous. And I have no doubt that it's your intention to be the quiet assassin of European democracy and of the European nation states. You appear to have a loathing for the very concept of the existence of nation states. Perhaps that's because you come from Belgium, which of course is pretty much a non-country. But since you took over, we've seen Greece reduced to nothing more than a protectorate. Sir, you have no legitimacy in this job at all, and I can say with confidence that I can speak on behalf of the majority of the British people in saying we don't know you, we don't want you, and the sooner you're put out to grass, the better.